what is this? M21, things you should do in a, try this in M21. Hello there, welcome back to another episode. Uh <laughs> Hello there, welcome back to another episode of Outside Notes. This time, we're talking M21 stuff you should try. Try this in M21. Anyway, sweet stuff in M21. So, M21, it's out in the wild. People have been drafting it. I've been drafting the heck out of it. I hope you have too. And uh, this time around on the show, we're gonna do a little bit of a deep dive on uh, one of my favorite archetypes in a limited format in a long time. Now, if you follow my videos or the podcast or whatever, you'll probably know the types of deck that I like to draft. I like the slower, more value-based control decks, and that often leads me to blue-black. That actually happened here too. But it's a different twist on Blue Black because there's a full-on reanimator deck available in this set. This deck is sweet. Seriously, it is a really cool deck with a lot of neat synergies. And it's all based around getting creatures into the graveyard, particularly expensive ones, and then getting them back for cheap. Of course, this deck revolves around the key card, Rise Again. This is the most important common for the deck because without it, you don't have that many ways to get back creatures from the graveyard. The good news is, generally speaking, you're the only archetype that really wants this card. I've played up to three of them in a deck, and I think that that's totally fine, but you want at least one or two to make this deck work, two probably where you wanna be. But even if you don't get one, there are a few other cards, Obsessive Stitcher being the main one that you can get, and this is, of course, the perfect card for this deck. This is the signpost uncommon for it, if you remember back to that. And <clears throat> this thing's amazing in this deck. Obsessive Stitcher does two key things for the deck. It allows you to discard cards from your hand, namely the expensive ones, which can, of course, allow you to buy them back with Rise Again, but also it is a Rise Again. It has an activated ability that lets you get a creature back and you can even do it at instant speed, which can create some cool opportunities. It can be a little slow because M21 has proven to be an assertive and fast format and one that makes you commit to the board. So make sure that you draft your deck around that but with these two key pieces, the Obsessive Stitcher and the Rise Again, you can do really powerful stuff. Let's get into that. So first, of course, in order to bring cards back, you need to get them into your graveyard. So I mentioned the Obsessive Stitcher is a great way to do it, probably the best way. But there's other cards. There's Teferi's Protege, which allows you to loot, draw a card and discard a card. So you can draw into the lands or perhaps the rise again that you need and discard the huge expensive creatures that you maybe didn't have in your hand yet. There's also Teferi's Tutelage, which can be a really powerful card in this format. And that allows you to loot as well to get rid of a card. So if you have something going along with Teferi's Tutelage, then you can include it in this deck. Crypt Lurker has been an absolutely key common for this because it's a card that really nobody else wants. And it allows you to discard a card from your hand a creature card from your hand, I should say, like one that you wanna reanimate later, and you get a card back out of it so you're not down a card and you're adding to the board a three, four body, which means that you can block and keep yourself alive long enough to pull your combo off. Been very impressed with, with uh, Crypt Lurker, more than I thought I would be. Now an uncommon is Carrion Grub, which is very powerful. It mills you for four when it enters the battlefield. So that helps stock up your graveyard for stuff. And then it's just good on its own as well. You can mind rot yourself. You could do that. Um, I predict that I will do that at least once over the course of the format, but uh, I wouldn't say it's a default line of play. Let's just put it that way. Once you have the ability to discard creatures and to buy them back, you need the good stuff to get back. So what are the best targets in the set to get back for a reanimator deck? The number one, a whale. And it's interesting because there's actually a rare whale, pursued whale in the set. That's not actually the one I'm talking about. I'm talking about Waker of Waves. Waker of Waves is amazing in this deck because it puts itself into the graveyard with its activated ability and it does it for value. You're getting the card back and card selection to again, help you find your pieces. And when it hits, it gives all the creatures on the other side, minus one, minus zero, which makes it hard for you to die the next turn. It's amazing. 
Wicker Waves might be my favorite card in the set, actually. Now, you could also, of course, get the Pursued Whale. It's not just a Waker of Waves, which is also a good thing to get back, but it's a rare and harder to find. The next best thing to get back is another uncommon. It's Gourmand. Gourmand? Gourmand? Gourmand is amazing. It's actually close to being good enough just at face value for what you get, but here's the trick. If you can get it into your graveyard and then reanimate it with one of your reanimator spells, you don't have to sacrifice the creature, but your opponent still does. That is insane. That means on turn five, you could have a 5-5 five, five Flampler that says you uh, sacrifice a creature when this enters the battlefield. That is absurd and makes it one of the best targets to get back. Going down the line a little bit at common, you've got Gloom Sower. It's big, it's expensive, it's pretty powerful, and it's just pretty good. Spine Megalodon, pretty much the same thing there. It's fine, you can bring it back. It is a target, it's just not a premium one. Roaming Ghostlight, look, you're gonna play as many of these as you can get in the deck anyway, but the truth is, you actually buy these back with reanimation spells more often than you'd think because of the enter the battlefield effect. It's just that good. Now this is a sweet combo, Shipwreck Dowser. So if that's in your graveyard and you cast Rise Again on it, as Rise Again resolves, it goes to the yard, then Shipwreck Dowser enters the battlefield, then it triggers and it can actually see the Rise Again in the yard and you can get it back so you get both cards. That's sweet. I know it looks a little weird to have Baneslayer Angel on here. Baneslayer Angel is representing any super bomb that you can get your hands on but that you can't actually cast. If you have enough ways to discard these types of cards, you actually can put off color bombs in your deck to get again. You need to be able to discard them. If you cannot, if you do not have a lot of ways to get them out of your hand, then you should not be putting them in your deck. It's too risky. But if you have three or four solid discard outlets, put a Baneslayer Angel in your deck and get it back. It's awesome. And I mentioned, I just have to mention this combo. It honestly doesn't have a lot to do with Reanimator, but it does go in this color pair. Teferi's Tutelage plus Peer Into the Abyss. It is absurd. You usually just went on the spot if you have Tutelage out and you cast Peer Into the Abyss because you can just mill your opponent out. That happened to me. I haven't been able to do it to them, but it definitely happened to me. So that's my favorite deck, but I figured we should call, yeah, Luis Scott Vargas and see what decks he's liked in the format. Hi, Luis. What up? What are you liking in in, uh, in M21? What are If you had to tell somebody, hey, you should try this in M21, what would you tell them? The first thing I would say is definitely uh, try mixing a little seltzer water with lime because it's really, really good. That looks like you've got more than seltzer water. In there. It's actually just sparkling water with a tiny bit of blackberry. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I, all of all of our uh, all of our video chats involve food in some way, but uh, <laughs> I, I would I would advise you uh, for M twenty one to play blue red spells. It's a really cool deck because it can be aggressive or controlling, and the good cards are good in both archetypes, like shock, scorching dragon fire, uh, spell gorger weird, experimental mm -hmm. overload. These are just awesome cards. But if you end up with enough experimental overloads and shipwreck dowsers and reign of revelations, then you can just beat your opponent in the long game by drawing a lot of extra cards. Teferi's tutelage perfect in this strategy. Mm -hmm. Or you can go the other direction and have uh, things like Mistral Singer and Chandra's Magmut and Spelljagorger Weird and just beat your opponent down using Frost Breath and removal spells to kind of keep them on their toes. Okay, that makes. W which one do you prefer? W which archetype? Um, I actually think the, the most fun one is when you're aggressive and have multiple copies of Goblin Wizardry, the four mana make two one one prowess instant. Yeah. Uh, I, I've been calling it Monastery Mentor, even if that's a little bit of an exaggeration. <laughs> and uh, I just love going like Spellgorger into Goblin Wizardry end of their turn. And then on your turn, you like Frost Breath, their two blockers and attack them for, for eight at that point. And that's almost just the entire game right there. The, the combination of end of turn Wizardry, untap, like read the tides, Frost Breath, even just like a, a Roman ghost light can really kind of turn the tempo where you think you've got them on the ropes and all of a sudden all your creatures are tapped down, they don't untap and you got hit for nine and then you're gonna die next turn and you're like, how did this happen? What other decks have you liked in the format? 
One of the decks that I, I really enjoy playing a lot is Black Green. And mm. so the Black Green deck, it's uh, if you look at the signpost Uncommon, Twin Blade Assassins, it draws you a card at the end of your turn if a creature died that turn. And you, you're going to want to combine stuff like Portcullis Vine and Malefic Scythe. Uh, you, you, Village Rites is great in this deck. Sky Scanner. So you want Sacrifice Fodder and then big green creatures to kind of close the game out. With defensive stuff like uh, Drowsing Pteranodon being really good, even if it never attacks in this deck, and it can even you know kind of use the black like Rise Again slash uh, Graveyard Lurker sort of thing to to kind of get a little bit of the graveyard synergy too. It's a deck that can go in a couple different directions, all controlling, but it can use use like pick and choose what kind of themes it wants to support, whether it's heavier on the reanimation or the sacrifice. Can even be a life gain theme if you get something like the rare veto who uh, whenever you gain life they they lose that much life you're just like gonna truffle snout them out and <laughs> give all your creatures lifelink and swing with your colossal dread moss so it, it can be a really fun deck to assemble any combos in any of these decks that stand out to you you mentioned a few of them um but is there anything maybe even if it's a little ambitious uh that you've seen or done uh to to get the job done in the format there's a mini combo in uh, any really any blue base deck of Library Larcenist, the one two whenever you attack you draw a card with Rousing Reed. That's a that's just like the, the one two punch where you give it flying. Now all of a sudden you have a two three flyer that every time it attacks you draw a card. It can be really difficult for your opponent to to deal with that. Um, in the in the black green deck, I actually like a uh, Silver Smoke Ghoul plus Truffle Snout. It's just a little <laughs> mini combo. The Ghoul's a three one for three that. Uh, you can sack it to draw a card, and at the end of uh, your turn, if you gain three or more life, it comes back, just straight up comes back to the battlefield tapped. So you can just play this ghoul and trade it off or sacrifice it to something or whatever you want to do, and then you just play Truffle Snout gain four and it comes back. Actually, it, it actually works out really, really well. Oh, that's sweet. And and that ghoul has been performing really well for me, too. I find it's going a little later maybe than it should. I think it's because the black-white life gain deck I, f I found is a little difficult to assemble. That's not one of my favorite decks. And the ghoul looks like it's supposed to be there, but I actually think the ghoul is totally fine in black-green. There's enough ways to enable it. And a 3-mana three 3-1 three is actually just fine to start with, where you don't have to do too much. If you get it back one time, it's already good. That's all you need to do. The bar is once. Well, Luis, thanks so much for uh, for chiming in. I, I always like to hear what you, because I know that you're a big experimenter uh, early in the format. Whoa, easy. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> are you okay? Thanks for having me, Marshall. I'll see you, buddy. <laughs> Know what's wrong with that guy? <laughs> he's got he's got problems. <laughs> he's got problems. All right. Well, we've got um, a few early clips here as well. So let's take a look. In fact, speaking of Luis Scott Vargas, let's see what he's up to here. They go to three because they're at nine, and then they have to block the. Actually, I think that. Hold on. This Bane Slayer Angel is an eight six, but opponents at one might okay. might work and then if i have any other action cards do i have a capture sphere left oh primal might <laughs> all right never mind it we now now we win i did not realize we had that all right so now i cast primal might for eight <laughs> this is amazing all right um eight on the gargadoth and the bane slayer and then <laughs> they go to nine but i have an enormous <laughs> thing and Wow, this took every card in my deck. I guess I'll make a 3-3 three, three, or game three, whatever. It doesn't matter. And I'll scry because I have two forests left. This was an epic game. Oof. Wow, that is incredible. If you notice there, Luis had literally two forests left in his library as well. And he's facing down an 8-6 Bane Slayer Angel. Yeah, only Luis could get away with that one. All right, let's see what our good friend Alias is up to. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> that was the perfect reaction from Ailey. And then 
our last one. We have to finish this thing off with Ben. And I have to say, Ben has become such a great streamer. He's always been a great player, but he's so funny now. Watch this. No, with no cards in their deck after all of that. This is their last turn. <laughs> Poor Ben. He, he got his opponent down to zero cards in library and then drew two lands and couldn't get the job done. Sad face for Ben, uh, but you know, he does plenty of winning. We're not gonna worry about him. All right, that's gonna do it for this episode of Outside Notes. I wanna say thank you to everybody who's watched this. I really do appreciate it. And hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Outside Notes. If you want to stay updated on all the new content on the channel, make sure you subscribe below and you can always hit that like button. It doesn't hurt. We'll see you next time.